Hi everyone and welcome to the third design video, the last one for today before the live stream this evening. In this video, we'll be looking at how we can use Boolean logic, binary arithmetic, and two's complement representation to build an adder subtractor unit. This will be the first big component for our full processor design. So we've seen how we can use transistors to build NOR gates, and that wires can be on or off which we interpret as ones and zeros, or true and false, respectively. We also saw how we can interpret multiple bits as a larger number. Now we're going to see how we can add and subtract bits, which will be the core operations of our computer processor. To start with, let's think about how we might add two single bits together. When we add two bits together, we get one of four results. We'll call the first input A, and the second input B, and the output Q. As we can see, the first three lines of this table are what we'd expect. 0 plus 0 is 0, 1 plus 0, or 0 plus 1, is 1, but the last line, 1 plus 1, looks a bit odd. 1 plus 1 should be 2, but because we've only got a single output bit, we can't represent the number 2. So our calculation overflows, and we just end up with the units column from the result. In binary, the number 2 is 1, 0, so the units column is just 0. What we need is a second output column. We normally call this the carry bit, which has exactly the same meaning as when we carry digits across in decimal long arithmetic. Let's rewrite our table, this time with the carry column. Now we can see the CQ columns form a 2-bit binary number that correctly represents our binary output. We now need to translate this into circuits. We do this by looking at the logic needed for each output, based on the inputs. With those independent output circuits, we can then optimize them by combining common elements. Let's start with the carry output. We see from the table that the carry should be a 1 when A and B are both 1. Right there we have our carry circuit, a simple AND gate applied to both A and B. OK, so now we need to look at our Q output. We can see that we want our output Q to be 1 when either A or B are 1, but not both. That should sound pretty familiar. It's an XOR gate. We already know how to build one of those, so let's add one in using NOR gates and see if we can optimize anything. We note that an XOR gate behaves the same whether or not we invert our inputs. And so we can eliminate one NOR gate by combining the circuits as shown. This is what we call a half adder, because we can add two single bits and produce a two-bit result. In a sense, our inputs are half as wide as our outputs, one bit versus two bits. The problem we have is if we want to add multiple bit binary numbers together, we need to be able to chain the carry results together, as we do in ordinary long arithmetic. To do this, we need to extend our half adder to make a full adder. We can do this by realizing that we're allowed to insert brackets into our calculation. So A plus B plus the carry in is equal to A plus B plus the carry in. This is just two half adders. This also works because the maximum value of adding three bits together is three, one plus one plus one. And we can represent three in binary using just two bits as one one. So our Q and carry outputs are sufficient for us to chain together the additions. So let's combine two half adders.
our carry output is now the carry output of A plus B, added to the carry output of Q of A plus B, plus the carry input. So we've now built our full adder for a single bit. Our next step is to package that up and make a multi-bit adder. In Logisim, we can create a package for our circuit and reuse it in other circuit designs, so we can hide the details and just look at the higher level design. For example, we create two 8-bit inputs, A and B, split them apart into individual bits, and then feed those into our single bit adders. We chain the carry outputs to carry inputs between the bits. And to finish off, we create a carry input for the first carry in on the lowest bit, a carry output from the last bit, and an output bus for the result. We'll see how the carry input can be useful in a moment. So now we have an 8-bit adder. From this we want to make an adder subtractor unit. If we recall from the first design video, we noted that using 2's complement to convert a number from positive to negative, or vice versa, we just need to invert, i.e. not all the bits, and then add 1. This is the key to turning an adder into a subtractor. A minus B is the same as A plus negative B. So let's invert the B inputs, and then we want to add 1. Conveniently, our adder unit has a carry input on the lowest bit. Putting a 1 on the carry input is the same as adding 1 overall. Hurrah! We can easily use our adder as a subtractor. Now we just need to be able to choose between adding and subtracting using the same adder unit. We'll create another unit for the mode control. This XNORs our input bits with the inverse of the mode. In effect, the input bits will be left the same if the mode is add, or they'll be inverted if the mode is subtract. Our carry input is the same as the mode input. And that's it, we have an adder subtractor built entirely from NOR gates. That's brilliant! We've come a long way in our understanding already. From simple and OR gates, we've seen how we can get to NOR gates, which we can make efficiently using transistors. We've seen how using NOR gates we can add bits together, and we've seen how we can interpret those bits as binary numbers. We can interpret them both as unsigned numbers, positive numbers, or two's complement negative numbers. The last thing I'd like to show you is a program called ModuleSim. ModuleSim was developed at the University of Bristol, and we even have physical versions of the modules it simulates. Using ModuleSim, we can simulate larger systems that combine those modules, which I've also referred to previously as units. Here, for example, is a simulation of an 8-bit adder-subtractor 
using the 4-bit chained add-on modules available in ModuleSim. The link to ModuleSim and the documentation for the modules will be in the description. We'll be using it later to create the full processor design, rather than doing everything laboriously in Logisim. That's it for this video, thank you for watching and please tune into the live stream this evening to watch me build the arithmetic unit in Minecraft Redstone. I'll also be answering your questions in the live stream comments.